Welcome to the first, and hopefully not the last, Halloween college fun. Um, that's if the video actually goes up on Halloween and not a day late, which is entirely possible. Um, so, whatever. Halloween is recently has become a much bigger thing, uh, especially on the internet, where everybody goes all spoopy. Um, it's a lot, lot different than when I was a kid, you know, in the neighborhood that I grew up in, the one that I currently live in. Still trapped. Um, but Halloween in this neighborhood, not the best, you know. The houses are really far apart, the driveways are really long, a lot of doctors and dentists who so get, you know, sugar-free candy and d d floss. You're like, come on, floss on Halloween. Why would you do that? Do you just wake up that day and think, you know what? I'm gonna make random children hate me for like a few hours. And then a card that says why you shouldn't be eating candy. Uh, oh yeah. It's like then why even participate? Yeah, I know that's it's just false advertising. I mean, I'm pretty sure like those houses would get like egged or TP'd, except I'm pretty sure like half the Manatee County Sheriff's Department also lives in this neighborhood. So, you know, it's a fun free zone. I mean, except for that one house in the back that has like a detached garage that had the like the best like haunted house. I guess where like they always did a better job than like like I've seen the crap with like Bush Gardens or Universal Studios and like and they do it way better. But regardless, another tradition, Halloween especially, if people start saying you're too old to go trick or treating, um, is to stay inside, away from other people, and watch scary movies. I did watch a scary movie last night. It has more like has scary moments. Um, and that film was Evil Dead 2: Dead by Dawn. Now, as the name ingeniously uh, states, it's the sequel to a movie called The Evil Dead. Fortunately, you don't have to watch that film unless for curiosity's sake, because Evil Dead 2 is a sort of a remake of the first one, and uh, I've seen that one as well, and I can, can confirm to you that the second one is a vast improvement over the first one. The characters are better written, um, the acting has marginally improved. And they basically recap the first movie within the first five minutes. Which is great, yeah. So, you know, it's good. So, yeah. Um, now, film's basic, basic plot, if I'm gonna do a bit of little, little critique of the movie, a review even. Um, you have boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, Ash and dead in the first 15 minutes, um, go to a remote cabin in the woods to do what um, college students do when they go to remote cabins in the woods, and of course they find this tape recording of a doctor who had discovered the Book of the Dead and the Necronomicon, and the, the Ash listens to the tape, the, the evil in incantations go, uh, and the demon is awakened, and then you get the classic Evil Dead shot, which uh, I parodied at the beginning of this video. You're gonna get used to that shot because they use it several times throughout the movie. So then, the person who dies in the first 15 minutes dies in the first 15 minutes. Um, Ash is stuck sur trying to survive the night. Some other char colorful characters come in. Um, they, they, they're also fodder. And then some crazy gore effects happen, uh, which is always a delight. You can see cartoonish over the top gore. Uh, some um, hammy acting. A lot of there's a lot of bad acting in this movie. This our main character is the best actor, but that's because he gives such wonderful um, facial features. I mean, like I never knew eyebrows can move so much. A plus. A plus in the eyebrow movement. That's your basic plot. Beat the demon. Just gets thrown into the past to set up the sequel. Um, I haven't seen the sequel yet. I heard it gets even sillier than this one. Um, it all depends on how you feel about horror movies. If you like them, like a more even mix of the horror comedy, like Evil Dead 2, a little more on the comedic side, like the third one, or like you, or a little more serious, like the first one. So let's let's break down. The soundtrack is, mm, no, that's I would say is the the sound the sound design is probably the other than the acting and it's probably the weakest part of this film. Um, they recycle the sounds more than once. Um, they try to do the whole, like, it goes quiet to add tension, but they do that multiple times, even though we're stuck in the exact same cabin, so it starts to get a little, little instead of, like, adding to the moment, it takes away, and you start realizing, wait, I've seen this hallway before. You start looking at your watch. Yeah, it's... Or your phone. Yeah. So that's watch. I mean, people are getting rid of their smart watches because they're completely stupid. <laughs> Uh, Pun intended. Hey! Not oh, great, you ruined me. Why would you, why would you do this to me? Uh, oh, right. Sound. Oh, sorry. Um, like this, there's not a lot of music, so I guess they're going for more of that minimal vibe, which I mean, which is fine. It's still kind of weak and it's a little off. It is a very low, like, very low budget, um, independent film. I see some people, like, use that to defend the film. It's like, to, like, excuse a good chunk of its flaws, and I'm like, no. Um, it may be, I mean, I like the film. 
I don't, I don't hate it or dislike it. Really like it. Um, but I don't think it's worth the 98% on Rotten Tomatoes Certified Fresh. That's like A plus. Um, you, you wouldn't, I wouldn't personally give A plus to a movie that has questionable sound design and really bad acting. So let's move on to the visuals. Now the visuals are are the best part of the film. It, there's a lot of style, especially that that iconic shot. Um, that whole whizzing through the forest, which they managed to achieve by just taking that camera, mounting it to a 2x4, and have two guys just kind of run run through the woods. The, the style, is, there's a great sense of style of the film, and um, it's, it does a, I love, it's just more of a personal thing when films use really good like light and shadow to uh, convey mood and atmosphere. This, um, this film had maybe like some better acting, you could probably get a better sense of that atmosphere, a little better music, but still there, you really, you get the feeling that they, they are kind of trapped, especially towards the end as um, things get more and more out of control. Um, another thing, the visual, the, the special effects in the film are remarkable for something so low budget, something so underground. And then, so I like, I see films like this, but there's clearly a lot, like, this was a passion project. You can, you can feel, um, the care that was put into it for, like, warts and all. And if you look at that and you see something, like, you know, the kind of, like, junk that they throw out on, like, the sci-fi channel every Saturday night, or, um, like, your typical asylum picture, these awful movies that just go straight to DVD to, for somebody to make a quick buck. Um, like, Sharknado is oh, Shark a prime example of that. Trying to be so bad it's good, um, trying to be that ironic sort of sense, where Evil Dead is not, a, Evil Dead 2, it's not a so bad it's good film. That more applies to the third one, Army of Darkness. This one, it's got this honesty and this earnesty to it that really, really, um, pulls you through, especially through some of the parts where it gets a little slow and repetitive at times. Like the camera work's excellent, the lighting, the shadow, the directing's very good. The effects as a, especially the end when they get like the whole, f makes it like, even though you, you don't see the whole forest moving, they make you feel like the whole, like the whole forest is rising up, being possessed by this demon to just kill everything. And that's an, that's one of the few, ex it's the classic like Jaws thing, you know, don't show the monster. Um, sometimes suggestion, like the power of suggestion is incredible in this movie. Um, instead of like contrasting that and when it does show the gore, it, like it knows when to show the gore, when not to show the gore. Whereas like you see a lot of like more uh, modern films that rely on gore, like the Saw films, um, especially the crap that Eli Roth puts out. I mean crap. It's like, he just tries to like, like, when I see a lot of gore, yeah, I can, I feel a little sick to my stomach, but that's not scary. Knowing how to use, use it, and, um, using it effectively, um, can really, um, really get, really get a hold of your audience. Like, for example, uh, there's a scene after, uh, our main character cuts off his hand, because it's, um, been infected with the evil, and it goes into the wall, and he shoots it, and a little blood starts coming out, and it's like, it's very, um, Kool-Aid blood, not like that realistic blood, but it's the kind of, like, really bright red blood you associate with these older movies, um, especially, in particular, um, like the 60s and 70s, um, Hammer films, if deeper into the horror stuff, but I like that sort of thing. Um, and then, this a big old geyser blood comes out, and it's funny for the moment, like, it's this, this big, big old shower of Kool-Aid comes out, and then, you, you, you kind of chuck a little bit, and then it goes to black, and you're like, wait. And then it all goes right back into the wall, and you're like, okay. So you're supposed to, you had set up, tension, release, and then set up for the next bit of tension. This film does an excellent job of that. And so moving into the last part, the experience. I would say um, this film is probably, I'm not, I watched it with some friends. Um, that's one way to enjoy the film, especially if you're, you know, if you're, if you're all right cracking a few jokes at it. So I would say probably the best way to view this one is all like dark and alone because then that's when the atmosphere can really get a hold of you. And again, it does lose a few experience uh, points for kind of dragging and cutting you some unnecessary characters. Uh, you're gonna learn to really um, be bored with the two redneck characters that they come across. I feel the film would have been better if they took those two characters and instead combined them into one um, because if you would merge the, 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 the daughter of the first redneck you could put her character and her arc, arc uh, into the first redneck, like instead of having Ash shoot her, shoots him, and have that his motivation to run out into the wood to be a little more internal instead of external. Because um, it's kind of hard for me to relate to the like tragedy or the pain a character is going through when they're just standing in the woods with a shotgun screaming, Bobby Joe, Bobby Joe. It's uh, <laughs> it just doesn't work. And then yeah. Um, that would have made that character more interesting and probably cut 10 minutes off the runtime, which I feel would have made the film a lot better. It had 
uh, has some pacing issues is, is what I'm saying. So overall, despite those those negatives like the the act, the bad acting and the the pacing problem, um, I would definitely say it's a good it's a good movie. It's a very interesting movie. Um, if you watch this movie, you start to kind of see the horror movies that came after it. You can kind of see the influence um, that other movies took from this film in particular. At, that with that sped up um, zoom tracking shot dolly thing that um, the, definitely the, the the emphasis on like the splatter um, a lot of like a lot of like excessive amounts of blood and a little more of a comedic turn in your horror as well it's very good I would do like the director did a fantastic uh, job with it and uh, the director's name you were probably more familiar with his later work. Um, directing a certain movie called called Spider-Man, starring a very very young Tobey Maguire. Um, just to, that just goes to show that everyone in Hollywood starts in either two places, horror or porn. That's just how that's just how the cookie crumbles. So who's the director? He didn't say his name. Sam Raimi. He's got a very good name. I mean, when, you, when your name's Sam Raimi, you, you're gonna do something artistic. He directed these movies. He also directed another. Um, some other movies, uh, Dark Man, starring Liam Neeson, uh, before he became a meme. Spider Man's his most uh, popular, um, most popular work. Though, did he do all three of those Spider Mans? Yes, he did. He did yeah. one, two, and three. Um, so yes, he did direct the infamous, uh, edgy emo dancing Spider Man, which. Depending on what kind of mindset you're in, if you go into the mindset like watching like one of his Evil Dead movies, that's kind of goofy and you kind of roll with it. It's entertaining. Um, it's good fun. I mean, I saw it. I like the whole, you know. <laughs> it was fun. Um, <laughs> so, what was your favorite part of the movie? For me, oh, favorite part. I would have to say my favorite scene and my favorite moment is um, after he's done working with his dealt with his evil hand, runs into the wall, and then I guess it like possesses every object in the room, like this like deer head on the wall, which is always um, creepy to me. Like just a mounted head, especially like the one that, the way they made it look like really old and ratty there. And then like it starts laughing and blood starts kind of coming out of it. And all, all the objects in the room start laughing. Like ev I mean like everything, like like a lamp starts laughing and like some books start laughing. Um, the clock starts laughing, like it's all shaking and everything's going up and down laughing. And then probably one some of his best acting in the film, Bruce Campbell, who has a fantastic chin. Like if you, if um, Watch Mojo ever did a, one of the top 10 chins in movies, which um, they might, well, they might be doing it right now. I mean, right after they do top 10 um, failed Food Network shows and top 10 best home improvement uh, shows on HGTV, you uh, know, they might do that. Uh, top 10 fonts, uh, top 10 shades of the color gray, top 10 bridges in Ireland, specifically the north of Ireland. <laughs> Um, they might, they might put that as a very, very good chin. Okay, back to, back to the moment. He does, like, the whole, like, he does an excellent job with that slow descent into insanity. He starts laughing and the camera does, goes with the weird angles and that really stretching perspective and warping it with the shadows. Um, and, re and really conveying, um, the, the, the crazy that's going on. Um, the set, my second favorite is the uh, what can only be described as the equivalent of a, a getting a power up in a video game. The side of we're gonna it's just Ash and f uh, Final Girl. She she had a name. She had um, some. She was the old guy on the tape recording. Hit her. That was her father. Yes. Uh, she had a name. She had some '80s hair. There was quite a, when all the characters, at least when they were all alive, when they first some... met. There was a battle of the '80s hair going on with the one guy with the bullet. Uh, other chick with. The Perm, and she was rocking the uh, the knee the, the, the jorts, high waisted jorts. jorts, which and knee high socks. Um, it's very eighties. <laughs> um, so you do the power up montage. It makes a um, big old. It's the chainsaw hand. So if you ever wondered where like the chainsaw hand and the shotgun comes, it's from this movie. And like does that big old dramatic zoom and it goes in groovy. So hundred percent necessary. Groovy. <laughs> yeah. So that's where that came from. You've probably seen a parody dozens of times. Um, I know my esteemed producer when she saw, she's like, oh, that's where that comes from. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like the part of the movie when he's having to chase the hand. Oh yeah. And he gets out and he's with the shotgun trying to shoot it, and it's like doing all this little, it's like little murmuring sounds yeah. or whatever. And it's like making fun of him. I like when it crawls out of the mouse hole and like flips in the bird. <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, Just right before that, that crazy laughing scene. I yeah. also like that one too. But I thought that little moment was mm -hmm. was a little fun. You know, I had a laugh. What, what
what do you think? Do you did you like the movie? Um, surprisingly, I wasn't going into it with high hopes. I didn't really have any mm -hmm. expectations for it or anything. But you know, I sat down and I watched. I was pleasantly surprised at it because horror is not my favorite genre at all. Um, but it was entertaining. You know, it definitely dragged in some moments. I there was a few times where I just I was like sighing a lot. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I give it like a, a C plus, C minus. You know. Yeah, you, you don't. You don't also don't agree that it deserves that ninety. No, I would say maybe a six and a half or seven out of ten. That's what I would rate it if I were to watch it. It's, it's a respectable, solid movie. I would rate it. I would go a little higher, give it more like a B, B plus sort of thing. It does not deserve A plus. No, definitely it not. It deserves more B plus. At least not for what what it is, what it did for horror films. Like you can see, like the influence is everywhere. Yeah, um, like I'm not jumping out of my seat to go see it again, but you know, I enjoyed the experience yeah. of seeing mm -hmm. it. I thought it was enjoyable. Um, my producer's just informed me that the battery's about to die, so happy Halloween, everyone. Stay safe. Um, don't worry about checking your candy from, for knives from strangers, because that's not a thing. That's something that's made up. Uh, and I will see you whenever, I don't know. Uh, mm, adios.